<coughs> called to order the July 25th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, reported by ACMI. Uh, our new time, 7.30 p.m., it's a permanent change. Uh, first up on the agenda tonight, uh, we have Scott Smith from the Transportation Advisory Committee and Laura Wiener to present us the Fleet Streets plan. Please. Um, I'm going to start. Um, so, why this is on your agenda? The, the Board of Selectmen recently um, adopted this policy for um, the streets and sidewalks in Arlington, and, and we're going to tell you what it is that they adopted. But you have a role in this as well, which is to um, implement the, the policy in private development. So, for instance, um, like with the Brigham Square project, which you looked at a couple years back. You had to look at the paths for pedestrians and handicap accessibility and the, and bicycles and to kind of make sure that there were connections between the bike path and the high school and Millbrook, Millbrook Drive and Mill Street, which you did a, a great job, I think. It came out very, really well. Um, but so this gives you a formal role in implementing this townwide policy in all private development. So. Um, we thought that it would be a good idea to sort of have a have some time to discuss the policy with you, um, so you can learn a little bit about it. Um, just to start at the beginning, a complete street is defined as a street that serves all users, so that's um, pedestrians, drivers, um, bike riders, and transit users. Um, it's a it's a strategy to encourage an alternative to driving by making the sidewalks more comfortable and safe for pedestrians and um, by providing bike uh, bike lanes to make people feel safer by using their bikes and therefore driving less. Um, the East Arlington Mass Ave Rebuild Project is an example of a complete streets project, so we were a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, curve. <laughs> <Not curve. laughs> um, the state, through um, MassDOT, has developed this program to encourage towns and cities to adopt this kind of policy. Um, they are providing funding to communities who adopt a complete streets policy. Um, we set up the Transportation Advisory Committee set up a working group. Um, Scott Smith is the chair of the working group. I worked on it. Um, the town engineer, the DPW director, Mike Rademacher, um, and the police were represented on it, as well as um, the planning department and four representatives of the Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, the policy was um, developed over about six months mm -hmm. or so. It went to the Board of Selectmen in April, and the board adopted it unanimously. Um, then it went to MassDOT, and they approved the policy in May. So we now have a, a, an approved a state approved policy adopted by the town and which set us up so that we could apply for funding. Um, in July, we applied for funds to improve the um, sidewalks and improve the general pedestrian environment on Gray Street, particularly the area closer to Odyssey School. So as well as putting in crosswalks and um, bump outs to make the crossing distance a little shorter where there's a lot of pedestrian travel on the way to Otteson. There's, it's, Gray Street is also heavily used by bracket families, but um, particularly the Otteson, that's when the kids start to walk by themselves. And so there's a lot of kids, sometimes gangs of kids walking up um, Gray Street together to school and the pedestrian, the, um, it can be a little bit hairy at times. I think. There's also a lot of drivers driving up there, driving their kids. Um, so that was the, the project that sort of rose to the top of the priority list for um, the working group. Um, Adam Chapterling also con contributed to that decision-making process. Scott is going to walk you through the policy. Um, I explained what your role is, um, but I also just wanted to add that the new policy that we just adopted in our zoning, allowing reduced parking with transportation demand management, is a very much a related policy because it's also designed to reduce car travel by making the other modes more attractive. Okay. Thank you. Personally, questions at this point. I just, uh, let me just finish that point. On, uh, so complete streets is the, really the engineering to accommodate all users. And uh, so pedestrians, bikes, 
motorist transit and actually freight uh, where appropriate. Um, and T transportation demand management is kind of the encouragement side of that. So you've done the engineering well then how do you encourage people to take transit rather than driving to this development? Uh, so there are two aspects that would work well together. Um, that so it's really I should also add that we're also concerned about universal access persons with disabilities, <coughs> encouraging active transportation for public health, and uh, finally economic development because with these modes of transportation you can enable more dense developments without the overwhelming parking and traffic. Um, so for the town, it's mainly we decided to focus on the big roads. Um, and so arterial, an example of an arterial is Mass Ave. A collector might be something like Bates Road, maybe Gray Street, I forget. Uh, medium sized road. Uh, so we're using prior, the big roads as priority for town projects. Uh, we're concerned about connectivity to adjoining communities. Uh, and finally, at the bottom of the first page is the point that's most relevant to ARB. It also applies to private projects. Now, we, we don't have big private development projects here, but we, have some medium, we might have some medium-sized ones. So the things to think about is, you know, within the space, how are you providing for all modes, and then also how are you connecting the transit, how are you connecting the bicycle network and the like, as go through the permitting for the project, things for ARB to think about. Uh, page two it has a number of guidelines to look at. Uh, Mass DOT, I think, was really a national leader in this business around 10 years ago, coming out with the project design guide. Uh, a number of other resources that TAC is familiar with, certainly. Uh, and then the specific points, you know, H2, pedestrian accommodation, persons with, persons with mobility, other impairments. Uh, street crossings, sidewalks. Um, we've already developed a bike facility network map of maybe the third, 12 dozen or so busiest roads in town that we view as a priority for bicycle treatment, uh, including Mass Ave, obviously. Uh, and then if you have cases where it just physically isn't room, uh, consider traffic coming where appropriate. Uh, administered by DPW, and another important part about implementation, and this was a state requirement, is that we maintain an inventory and actually begin to do some evaluation. Uh, what are the modal shares? Uh, how are we doing on safety, for example, in bicycle and pedestrian crashes? So that's something that's a little bit new and we're working on baselining that information now. Um, and finally, a number of exceptions. It physically isn't rural, room or it's a very lightly traveled street where uh, you really don't need special accommodation or anyone can just share. Um, so that, uh, any questions? Uh, no, actually, I thought it looked good. I understood it. Um, you know, I, I guess one one question I had a little bit, even on private ways and private developments, I seem to recall that as the border surveyors, the selectmen don't usually pick up that piece of this. I mean, I have no problem implementing this, but like on Sims, I remember that they that they named the streets and you know that type of thing. Um, I guess I guess that's the one. 
once again, I, I'm fine implementing this. I just, as far as the separations, like I said, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. But. So that that was a, a public way. Oh, it was a public way. I believe so. Yeah. Oh, uh, the old hospital yeah. way it was. It was yeah. Hospital road. Road. yeah. Right. So this is just okay. private. Okay. Got it. And so it was public, and that's and why they I don't were think we will be. Do, we don't. We don't do private ways. No. So no. It would come up in a private it's way. It's more just access. Yeah. Okay. But I think for in other communities, and it seems inconceivable here, but it's possible that there could be a subdivision. Yeah. And right. so you would want to make sure that there were way. sidewalks yep. in the subdivision, yep. and not every place. No, I, I think I think for that reason, it's 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 important. I just was, yeah. I was a little bit confused about that. So. Yeah, I would say you know, it's more relevant to physically larger communities and they have major more development. Yeah, more development. Yeah. 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 Comes to exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of space there. So. Uh, but here I think there's some relevance, especially with the connectivity yeah. and development to everything else. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Um, well, administratively, right? <clears throat> Uh, and commercial, let's say government projects. Yeah. Um, encouragement comes through funding, additional resources to help the projects. Mm -hmm. And so, is it in government projects, or let's say federal projects, federal funded projects, government, state projects funded, is that a, a, a required by code, by law? Or is, is this an encouragement obtained from the actual funding you, you get? It's a policy. It's not law. So it's, okay. So it's, so it's the encouragement of additional funding which makes this happen. Well, the town has now adopted this as its policy. So even if it didn't get money from this program, it would it would it would be obligated to at least to at least try to make it work. That's what I'm, that's what I'm, I'm trying to lead you around to right now is for some of these private developed projects, what is the stick? I mean, what is, what do you, how do you make them? Uh, you hold the permit, that's the deal. <laughs> so, okay, so, so that's what the selectman is saying, hold up the permit until they get, uh, at least achieve uh, this uh, complete streets kind of look, or, uh, or make their best attempt at. Is that what well, I'm hearing? Have, I, I'm think, I think what it is is in the EDR, one of the main things that we're looking for is transportation and uh, flow of traffic. Well, I, it's, it's no, 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 no. And I think, what, I think this would inform that particular provision of the EDR from here on in. Once we, once, we, once we adopt this, if we, if we were to adopt this, I think this would be an overlay on that portion of the EDR in respect of traffic and, 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 and traffic flow. And that ties into what you just get for the permit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm trying to lead you. I'm just trying to figure out. It becomes, it becomes part of the conditions of granting. Okay. That's what I was trying to get. It becomes part of the conditions. It, is it, it's parallel to the, to the zoning that we're upholding. Yes. It's more of in the design review area than in the um, zoning. Yeah. So in the design review process, it, we usually permit. do like to look at the traffic circulation. So the wording in the policy is guidance, and so therefore the guidance to the ARB in reviewing projects that have these this sort of set of circumstances that you would guide them through thinking about complete streets. I actually think this is very helpful to us because otherwise what we've done in the past, just to be clear, is kind of say, we'd have the TAC come and say, yeah, this makes sense, and we all kind of look around at one another and say, yeah, okay, but, you know, they, <laughs> they're the experts, they know. And I think what this does is it informs us about some of those uh, things that, you know, that they'll use in their decision right. as well as what we should use in ours. I, I think yeah. it, I think it helps us be a little bit more informed in respect to that particular portion of the EDR itself. So, so it's parallel kind of running with the EDR. It's informing. It's a policy the town has adopted, but it's not strictly part of the EDR. Right, it's not, and it's not in zoning either. It's not in so zoning either. Okay. Yes. Guideline. Exactly. And the way Mike says it, I think is right. It's, it's, it's helping us define aspects, but it's not part of the EDR, per se. No, not unless you mention the process. And um, 
and how, how would it tie in if you really wanted to go there in terms of transportation management? What's the thing we need? Yeah, that guy. Does it, can we use it and say, well, you fulfilled transportation, transportation demand management because you've uh, done X, Y, Z, plus you've, you've followed some of the street uh, policies. Can we, we can say that. Can we say that? We can say whatever we want. Technically, it doesn't tie into the EDR, but it can't. It, it informs. It really does not kind of following up on what you said. Yeah. It, 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 it ties. It doesn't tie directly, and it informs. Right. And, you know, you are, the, the purpose of having a review is, is you can, there's some flexibility so you could, the circumstances. So you could make it a condition, say, in order to help the transportation right. demand management. Mm -hmm. And I think that and I think that flows with some of the decisions that we've made on some of these bigger projects now. It gives us a guideline of what questions to ask and what, what provisions to put in place to make sure that our, I think describing it as, a par as running parallel with EDR makes sense. Because now it gives us these guidelines to, to review these projects under to make sure that they're not only consistent with our EDR process but with the complete streets policy to make this <coughs> transportation options fit a little bit better and more consistently with all users. And under jurisdiction, it says any project receiving funding from state, federal, or private entities receiving funding. In private entities, but what if it's just a private project in front of Mill Street? Where is that? Jurisdiction. Under jurisdiction. Yeah, but if they're seeking a special permit, then they would fall under the same. Control. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's no, but this is this is any. This is maybe. That is any. Yeah, it's anyone. That's what I'm getting at. Private. So. What doesn't it cover? It covers everything. Yeah, it covers everything. Yeah, it's hard. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. I have a quick question. Two questions. Sure. Um, have you presented this to ABAC, the Arlington Bicycle oh. Advisory Committee? Are they ABAC engaged? ABAC was in part of They're part of the yeah, process, yeah, the right? Process. Scott serves Hi. on both. You're on and both. is okay. liaison between the two groups. And then have you, there's the bike <coughs> network map. Have you thought about doing a bike bicycle pedestrian plan? Has that come up in some of the conversations? <coughs> I recall <coughs> it coming up in a conversation. Many, it many has ago. come up in conversations. I don't think it's gone further than that. Okay. That uh, seems to have it naturally. Of course. Yeah. We have the first step of that, which yeah. is um, actually we have more than one step. Yeah. So we have a, um, a survey mm -hmm. of yeah. all of the sidewalks, curb ramps, yeah. that's, and, and street condition. Yeah. And then more recently, we have this ADA transition plan. And so that also sort of prioritizes places for getting curb ramps. Mm -hmm. So, I, but we have not gone to that next step of the pedestrian plan. I was just wondering if it had been discussed at the time that you were talking about that. Yeah, I think we're doing the metal. We were all working on the master plan first. <laughs> and the only other thing I would add is the subcommittee of ABAC mm -hmm. uh, has been working on bicycle friendly community reapplication. So there's been some thinking about mm -hmm. uh, bikes in a planning context. What's the metric on additional funding that you might get through? Uh, the maximum funding is four hundred thousand per town. Per two year per year. Well, we don't know. This is the first year that the program is yeah. out, so everything's a first time. So we don't know about future years. It probably depends how many communities come in for the money this year to see how much they have left next year. And then whether it gets reauthorized. I mean, there's a lot of things that aren't known yet. Is it a, is it a mass program? Or mass stop, yes, just mass. mass. No mm -hmm. federal money, just state money. Yeah, but I mean, is it adopted by other states? We don't know. There are other states that have complete streets mm -hmm. programs. They're yes. own state funded programs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I think it was just a presentation. Where it's already been adopted. Yeah, yes, you don't have to make a sort of conclusion. It's done. They come in. We can not. Yeah, it says the uh, plain word shall adopt these. I know, I saw that too. I think that means when you're reviewing okay. the project. Cool.
wording. The um, yeah, shall adopt, but I think it's when you're reviewing okay. projects. I mean, I, correct? I, There's no I've reason never to heard any the policy. requirement that this board or planning board adopt. Yeah. Sounds um, good. Okay. Central School needs a lease of space. Okay. All right. So I distributed for reference um, a memorandum of understanding that I've been working on. I, myself, and my care and Adam Chaffley with the Arlington Center for the Arts uh, to create a memorandum of understanding that would be essentially a bridge between now and July 1st of next year the time that they, the Center for the Arts would be ready to sign a lease, to put together some sort of overarching goals, terms, and conditions so that we can you know, mutually agree to then sign on to a long-term lease. So it's sort of an interim step. Um, this was drafted in part by the Center for the Arts and also by our town council, and has been reviewed by Mike and Adam, and I realize you haven't had a lot of time to review it before tonight, but um, wanted to give you an opportunity to discuss it and to see if you'd be willing to you know, either, well, ACA is here right now, first of all, so oh, if, yeah, I just put it down tonight, yeah. And so in the last two leases, but one of them, you signed a formal lease with the retirement board. I brought the lease here, the other one was an authorization to allow Andrew to sign a lease. So depending upon what your comfort is, this is designed to be signed by Andrew. Because it's an MOU, it's not a lease. Um, so that's, so, I'm sorry. Um, yes, yeah, can please. I make a suggestion? Maybe, maybe, why don't we start with what's gone on? Sure. Why don't we level set? Yeah, as, good point. As far as where we are. I'm jumping in. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I'm excited. That, exactly. Exactly. So, <laughs> so the, the board might recall. Uh, yeah, the board might recall that we put out the RFP uh, for sure. several, several different spaces. Uh, one of which was the ground floor where uh, uh, the Arlington Housing Corporation, uh, or the Housing Corporation of Arlington, used to be. Um, and then there were the there was a space on uh, three and four. Um, the um, we approved and signed the lease for the retirement board to fill that uh, ground floor space at the last meeting. Uh, in the interim, and we also approved at this meeting, was uh, to allow for us to sign an amendment with the folks at the Mystic River Watershed Association for some contiguous space on uh, the third floor. And actually, you can actually see it in, in uh, the maps that we have. Um, uh, here. It's on the third floor plan. It's on the third floor plan. It's this space right here, uh, which was con contiguous to their current space, which was over here. So that's all done, um, if, if I'm right. not mistaken. So, yes. so that's both of those are finalized and, and in the can, as it were. And now we're uh, talking about uh, the, uh, the remaining space on level three, as well as all the space on four. Uh, for which we only received one response um, uh, in, in response to the RFP, and that came from the ACA, a very strong uh, response. Um, the timing was such that, you know, uh, they aren't ready to move because, you'll recall, they're in the Gibbs right now. The school, uh, the school department will be taking back over the Gibbs as of next year, next school year. So they have a kind of an exit date of July 2017 from over there. They need to do some fundraising uh, in order to make the space on three and four um, fit their needs, as well as make it a showcase that they know it can be, which will be tremendous. Um, and uh, all of that will start happening next July when they should be in a position to sign a lease. Um, and yes. if you're okay, I'll keep. So, so I think. I think what you have in front of you is we were trying to figure out how we deal with the fact that they're really not going to be ready to enter into a lease until next July, as well as to get our level of comfort in that they are going to be able to raise the money in order to make the changes that are necessary to make it useful to them. It really didn't make a lot of sense to sign an actual lease right now uh, for 
all of those reasons. Um, they need to do the fundraising in order to be able to um, uh, refurbish the space to their needs. Um, they need to be out of their old space and not taking on two rents right now. Um, but it is a good plan and it makes a lot of sense for us to be able to um, kind of enter into uh, um, an understanding where we can set some goals for them to hit that can make us feel good that, you know, fiscally they'll be in a good place to sign that lease and be able to do the renovations that are necessary. Um, and they can feel good because they will not have made such a, a, a big commitment until they've done that fundraising as well. So we've called it the chicken and egg a little bit uh, in that they need something in hand to go to don potential donors and say, hey, we've got this great space, we're gonna make it you know, beautiful and, and, uh, and fit our needs better than anything we've had before. Um, so the way to get around this was to do this understanding um, and statement of understanding. And so we think this is a, this is a nice creative way to do it. Um, we're going to, also you'll see in the statement of understanding that we're providing them with the ability to um, enter in a little bit early so their architects can get in there and kind of dig in and see what's going on and make sure that their plans are going to be in good shape. Um, there might be an opportunity uh, in the interim until then, uh, there might be some need from uh, some, of the, uh, some of the town departments or the schools to, to use that space for the next year. So that we might be able to be opportunistic in, uh, in letting out that space on a very short term basis uh, to others in town. So, um, so the statement of understanding is about complete flexibility until we and they are in a position uh, to sign up for these. And we go over some of the, the main thrusts. I think what you'll see in the statement of understanding is making it that document that they can show to potential donors that says, hey, if we do this, then we can sign up a lease with the town. We have the commitment to sign up a lease and to have this space. From our perspective, you'll also see in there that we want to see some serious fundraising going on before we make such a commitment to the organization. So I think it's a nice win-win for both parties. Um, and that's that's what you've got in front of you. Um, and so just to pick yeah, up please. on that, in section two, which is kind of the, the heart of it, the conditions, um, there's everything from submission of quarterly reports, monthly meetings um, to get updates, to having a financing commitment of a certain dollar amount um, to be raised on or before January 31st, with some conditions on that, and then an accompanying project schedule obviously the, the, uh, the design plan, and then the rent proposal, which has been amended to reflect the exact amount of square footage that they would be renting compared to what they had bid on, which was the entire space. So that included the space that, it, that then went to uh, Mr. River Watershed. And with the flexibility, I would just add, um, from the town's perspective, that there's a commitment to the rent outlined in that proposal in years one, two, and three with some flexibility in year four to look back at that rental amount and uh, negotiate. And that's also reflected in that attachment. Jenny, before, yes. I, before I yield, I, I just wanted to make sure I understood. I think there's one number I didn't quite get. The, the 130 in, in B, in 2B, 130K, yeah. it, it, that's the number for half. Base Correct. renovation. It was actually base renovation cost was estimated at two hundred and sixty. Two sixty. Okay. So that's so, why I wrote minimal renovation. Which is there. which is fine. I would just move the hundred and thirty to right after the word half, okay. so that because I think by it being down on the of the capital outlay, yeah. it, okay. it looks yeah, like that it's the full. Of yeah. that. So <laughs> okay. half yeah. would be <laughs> one third. <laughs> yeah. Clearly. So, so I, that that was the only thing I, I saw in it. So, so with that change, um, okay. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. So, and we're happy to walk through this further and answer questions, or walk through the the attachments here. I realize this is the first time you're seeing the information. I had hoped to have it in time for the packets, but knew that we would be talking about this tonight. Um, oh. And of course, we may want to ask people. Here. Sure. Okay. I've only had a brief chance to look at this, but I've already marked it up with some okay. comments okay. and some edits. Um, what's sort of the worst case scenario here? We're tying this up for 
potentially a year if, you know, God forbid, ACA isn't able to reach its mm -hmm. financing goals, its fundraising goals. Worst case scenario is as of December or January 31st, January 1st. if they are, if we're not, neither one of us is in a place to commit to going forward for some reason, mm -hmm. um, then we would put, the, we would go back out through the same process again and okay. put out an RFP for a lease of the space. In December? No, in after January, January, January 31st. Yeah. January, yeah, February 1st. That's 2017. The, the deadline stated here in Section 2, that would be, it was January 31st. Hearing that makes January 31st, 2017 seem much closer. Very close. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought when I read it. So okay. It's halfway to to the point of July 1st. Which okay. I, I think this is good. I think you know, there's a couple of ports I think things will be able to change, but I can send you a red line if you want. Absolutely. Um, but no, I think this is this is great. It's a good commitment on both ends uh, to get in. It's, it's, you know, we were able to do it in a relatively quick period of time. I guess the other question I had is if, if ACA is to provide quarterly reports to the ARB, uh, but they're meeting with you monthly, are they going to be expected to provide financials at that point? At the with your monthly or with me. I would yeah. be so checking in on the financing and you know getting progress, you know, status yeah. update, I, I, and everything I, that's happening. I, I don't know if you want to put that in writing, just to kind of outline sure. that. And then instead of shall agree to, I would just say shall meet monthly with the director. Um, sort of monthly updates to you at that point. Yeah. By signing this slide, we do it anyway. It's a little more firm. So I'm going to put in financial goals. The MOU's financial, financial goals. Financial goals, yeah. Yeah, and I think that the other thing that Andrew mentioned was just about the words. I think that's the words agreed to. Yeah. yeah. Part D, again, yeah, just putting on my, my day job hat, I would just add in any any arrangements to access the premises have to be done with reasonable notice so that you can accommodate anyone else that might be in there. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to say 24, 48 hours, I think we need to be further up than that. about this actually uh, <laughs> I think it's a good thing. Um, I do have some questions as far as programming. Just, um, do you guys just on the fourth floor show just yellow and off area? Yeah come on up. Yeah. Please. <laughs> then then introduce yourself. Then introduce yeah. yourselves. or is it going to be all these enclosed rooms that the wait is right now? Well, it depends <laughs> on which version goes through it. But, okay. This was laid out um, to look at what a division of roughly 150 square foot zones for artists would be, whether they're full high partitions or eight foot high partitions or movable partitions, which were there. But we're just using that as our module so that we could come up with a, a rough number of, of artists who would be there. So that's what the layout is. Okay, I, I was thinking in terms of infrastructure. I mean, mm -hmm. once you 
you know, if you don't go full heights, you go half heights, it, it makes a big difference in the sprinkler system. You know, Absolutely. I mean, you all aware of that, okay? Yep. So, you know, so that's, that affects how much it, it's going to cost to do what you want to do. It does. And in turn, I'm just looking at some of the numbers here, and I'm like, wow, this is a little on the uh, conservative side as far as funding to do all the work. Well, yeah, I didn't bring the, the right. I brought the, um, let's see. So we, we brought, we basically we had three scenarios that we were looking at because okay. basically, um, given the, the time frame and the request for assurances on right. where we are on fundraising, <laughs> we wanted to put together scenarios which say there are different scenarios for our occupancy and the lightest weight scenario, which is the one we put in, okay. looks at basically very few removals or shifting of, of partitions. Basically, we adopt more of a strategy like we have at the Gibbs School, which is we've moved into a space and we kind of adapt and live with it. So that's the infrastructure question. Yeah, so that's why we're, okay. we're saving on infrastructure by not relocating heads or, or playing around with the HVAC that much. And we're, um, we're more adapting the space that's there. On the, on the upper floor, when you have that sort of hybridized. There's, there's a few enclosed spaces and there's some open spaces. So in the end, how the artists might adapt to that it would still be a, a mix where some might have fully enclosed and some might have more open spaces. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is actually, I'm sorry, this is a hand, um, in the attachments. It's under, it says new space. And there's a chart. Yeah, that's why I looked at the um, numbers. Yeah, no, earlier, just, uh, just for right. everybody's reference. I don't, I don't know, but I'm hearing yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> yep. Sort of makes sense to me now, okay? I mean, when I was looking at this and I'm looking at this, it's sort of, okay. Uh, I'm right. not going <laughs> to question it, but I'm right. uh, because. Yeah, so so one of the things that when, when we were thinking about it, when the panel was thinking about it, uh, was we wanted to make sure that they would have space that they could use for the purpose that they have. And we wanted to set fundraising goals that made sense in respect to that. But but we kind of thought about it as a minimal viable plan, right? Versus, and, and that's where you get the 260, half of that's the 130, and, and, and that type of thing. So that's why you're seeing that. I think everyone would hope, and, and uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed, that the fundraising is going to be a great success, and that they'll be able to move up the, uh, the spectrum to the, uh, uh, to the things that give them a lot more flexibility. Would you take more space, or would it be the same amount of space, just done in a different way? It would be done in a different way. Right? Basically, same we would start moving parts in, we would start playing with the infrastructure, uh, and you know, every time you do something, you get to add a dollar for it. No, no that's, that's, that's a, yeah, it's but, not a, it was a good question. Uh, it's not a question where I was trying to criticize them. Oh, no. Yeah. And, 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 um, also, on the third floor, yeah. right? There was existing bathrooms. Right, by the, cha uh, the change of use, does it require us to um, add more bathrooms or oh, fix the bathrooms? For the occupancy that's there? Yes, it, it's a change of use right now, isn't it? No. No? No, I don't believe so. Not for the use of that building, is. Well, this becomes a gallery now, right? Um, so. Uh, Where are you looking for? Well, he's looking at the third floor. He's just in general, the, moving around the bathrooms. I think it's classrooms. Um, well, classrooms and gallery. I mean, gallery is public space. It's, it's where you're going to mm -hmm. invite people to see the artwork, and I think that's great. I like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, well, it's a question. I'm not. I'm right. Not, I'm just well, it's, this right it, as far as the building goes, it's a public building. You should be throughout. Yes. And when it, when it was offices, it was a public building. Like, I think its population is actually going to drop a little bit because I don't know what its day to day occupancy was with the uh, Department of Health. Uh, but they had a, a, a pretty heavy office office presence there. Um, our typical evening class size for students is. We might have 40 people in an evening. Um, I know. Oh, right. 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 So our numbers are going to be about the same. I'm not asking you to answer it. I'm just, I just don't know. And I'm just wondering, is that something we should look into also? Just say, you know, otherwise we might have to carve more space out or do something else or add another bathroom or, mm -hmm. or stuff just to make it work. Or if hopefully it will work as is. I'm, you know, 
So these are, right. um, they, just to find time, these are, this is the, as Patrick has described, a, a preliminary yep. plan and the cost estimates are based on the single minimal versus the, the extraordinary. And they would be, they would come back to me to be approved. So not this, it's not like we're approving this as is. There will be other iterations of this to review before anything can move forward. And many discussions with other tenants in the building, um, as well as uh, Fred Lambert, who's uh, the eyes and ears of that building. Yeah. So lots of lots more discussions to come before this is finalized. And I think that helps a little bit, including you know making sure we have all the right utilities in place. No, but I think that I anticipate as we move forward, we will have all sorts of questions like that, which come up as we get into more of the nitty gritty detail of what's going to happen. But I'm just glad we're sitting at the table close to this point where, <laughs> where we're going to be able to tackle addressing uh, questions and raising them. I agree, that's a great use for this building, and that's where we should, should have the town should have it. And it's great that we come together and found the place at the right time, the right place at the right time. I think I'm excited too. Um, yeah, I think it's great. I'm excited about it. What, what, what are your fundraising goals, procedures, what's your outreach like? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, we've just contracted with the center to come in over the next year and help us with this capital campaign. Mm -hmm. This is a, a new level of fundraising for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we really felt we needed some additional expertise on staff. And uh, maybe I'll start and you can jump in. Sure. Um, Lisa has helped us put together a comprehensive plan with mm -hmm. multiple strategies for raising this money, from major donor outreach to um, direct mail and email solicitation to fundraising events to corporate seeking cor corporate support as well as credit support. Okay. And so it's a, it's a combination and we've laid it out over the four quarters ahead to hit the 10 to 50 percent by yeah. January 31st. And again, and you're, you're looking at a minimum of 130,000, but you have written in here that you're allowed to pull 75,000 from your own reserves. So right. I think that's certainly Certainly, you. Yeah. yeah, that's great. We'd rather leave our reserves. We'd rather not. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah, I hope you don't have to touch that. We're not even really thinking about that, but, but that's the emergency contingency. Yeah. Right. yeah. That's no, that, 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 that makes me feel good about it. Um, yeah, I mean, aside from some some red lines and some some wordsmithing here, I think I'd be more than happy to. to so the only other thing I guess I, I want to mention and, and thank you, I, it's not really about ACA or, or anything else, it's, it's the fact that the board should understand that we're going to take a big hit on this financially. Um, it, there is going to be a gap uh, between, uh, given the ACA's arrival, um, you know, we were able to get good deals on our other two uh, spaces, um, but it certainly doesn't make up for the fact that we've lost uh, the Department of Mental Health and uh, um, uh, and the other state agency. Um, so I, I think something to understand, and I don't think else we've got to turn. I mean, I, I believe we have the support uh, of uh, town manager yeah, during the budgeting process uh, to help up and to help out in getting some of this up. I think. Also, as, as I mentioned, the hope is, is that there might be a short-term gain uh, with a potential um, uh, user of the space. So we'll have to see whether that comes to fruition. Um, but, uh, but we should all understand that uh, one of the other reasons for a January 31 kind of view is because in going into town meeting and budgets and everything else, we'll really need to understand what it is that we're doing here and what it is that we're committing to. Uh, the fact is, is there were no other responses to the RFP. So um, it's, you know, we were taking a hit no matter what. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, obviously, uh, if you look back at the, at the original um, urban plan for that space, it was supposed to be a, a community um, uh, place. So I think this gets back to the roots. I think to some extent, Having the state agencies in there was a was a great thing from just a pure cost perspective, 
but I'm not sure it really was the what it was first uh, developed for. So I think we're getting back to the roots. I think we have the support of the town, but you know, come the spring, we'll definitely need to get our ducks in a row and and be able to have you know, with any luck, the manager and finance committee support on on the move we're making here because the the building is is very likely not to be self sufficient uh, once we make this um, uh, decision. So. I thought it was self sufficient. Um, it was it was self sufficient in that there's a lot of things that need to be done. So yeah, it matters what you consider to be self sufficient. If you let something go to go to heck, I think uh, it's self sufficient. It certainly needs some capital outlays, etc. So those are being discussed. That's separate. Also, yeah. separate. That's a separate. So, yeah, that's a separate there communication. Are other but about but I yeah. but I think I think it it, it was fairly self sufficient. It won't be. And just to uh, let you know that financial picture of what what it will look like, including projections, will be at the next meeting. Once we conclude this conversation, then I'll provide you with the projections. The way it is right now, we projected revenue. Okay. <clears throat> I do wonder whether we need to add a condition in there about us getting the support for the program. In and an appropriation. Between us and the ACA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost as if we don't get the support of mm, oh, town meeting, and we don't get the appropriation. So, um, since we're talking about money, yeah. um, the, the Urban Renewal Fund would be a source of funds okay. in the immediate, and it's certainly a healthy account to draw from, number one. And number two, I would say the next year, because this is a this is like a three-year plan, really, what, we're, what we would be entering into here. It's not really... Things don't change dramatically as of July 1st right. next year. It's really looking ahead. So I would suggest that that's a future conversation. And frankly, it aligns perfectly with the senior center conversations in terms of what we have proposed as a capital plan. So I think they would all come together as one big happy request. Okay. Happy. Going to town meeting with your going to town meeting with your hand out is never a happy conversation. No, well, you just have to ask. So. <laughs> but we will be asking for the senior center, so it's timely at that point to also talk about other means of the building. So you need to vote to authorize. To authorize, to authorize me to sign it. I move to authorize the chairman. ARB Andrew Brunel to sign the member of a, the memorandum of understanding with the Arlington Center for the Arts and Arlington and the Development Board. As amended. As amended. I'll second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Good luck. Board member two. Board member two. Congratulations on your job. Mike, you can introduce the 10-year left-up version, then I can... Um, you know, what? Mm -hmm. I'm glad to take the edits and see if I can work with them. Why, send it to you. I don't think you'll be able to read my handwriting. Okay. I have a neat copy here if you want. I have a written one. Well, I, I'm going to send Jenny mine. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll send you the draft. Yeah, just a little. I just want to make sure that. Yeah. I did. I did it right here. But we're, but it's, you know, it's, it's a draft. I just want the. Do you have that You may. How many? Yeah. If you have a number. I do. Yeah, if you have a number. Thanks for giving me a break. See, I just wanted to show you that. We knew you wanted it. <laughs> so we can do some additional copies. It's a little awkward, but... So, um... No, it makes sense for me to do that. So I'll email that to you, and then you can send me... Yeah. Mark, you can send me the draft. Yeah. Nothing in here is particularly controversial. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think there is any problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's changing. It's changing. There was a little email issue. There, there, there was a reply versus a reply all that uh, kind of got screwed up. Yeah, no, that's okay. No, I think we, I think I heard all the voices, including Linda's. So, 
Yeah. Um, so the only other thing related to the Central School is um, I am still trying to work with Kathy Bodie from the, super, the superintendent to talk about the potential use of the space. I, I don't have enough information about it to report anything back, but I just wanted to let you know that those conversations are still happening. Okay. So That's I'm meeting with her yeah. tomorrow at noon, and that would be then for your next meeting, I can bring something to you. Keep talking because yeah, I'll keep talking. Is yes, now. right. So um, mostly updates and dates for you to be aware of. I think I shared some of these from the last meeting, but first thing that I thought we could celebrate is the housing production plan that was that you adopted on June twentieth was adopted by the board of selectmen okay. on July eighteenth. So that's fantastic. What was the debate like on that? Was there a lot of comment on it or no? I would say and Laura was there. It was very minimal. Really? Um, hmm. We, I think, had a you know less than an excellent ours. presentation, um, okay. and they had enough information before them and had asked questions that you know helped them to decide to move it forward. Okay, and we had incorporated your changes into it, so um, it helped. Yeah, that was positive. So it was adopted, and so the next steps are that we're um, we'll get the meeting minutes approved tonight from hopefully from the ARB from June 20th, and then we'll await the approved minutes from the Board of Select, and then it goes to the state for ultimate approval. Okay. And so hopefully that'll be an approved plan as of September, I guess, Good. based on the time. Great. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is just an update. We're in the, I mentioned last month that we're in the hiring process for both the Community Development Block Grant Administrator and the Senior Planner, and uh, today, and then the rest of this week, our second interviews with people. So I'm hoping that we can make some decisions by the end of this week, and that two new people will start in probably the next three weeks, which will be very important <laughs> to the health and well-being <laughs> of the department, because we have many things happening right now, and um, the federal grant program really requires somebody to be running it all the time. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Um, and then in terms of upcoming meetings, I had mentioned at the last meeting that the support Arlington Heights meeting is happening, that's this Thursday night now at the Don School. Um, and then just some other updates since we last met, the Zoning Recodification Working Group, the first meeting is now on August 4th at 8 a.m. And then I'm now, now that I have that meeting scheduled, I'm gonna work on the Residential Study Group first meeting date. Um, the Historic Resources, is it a working group committee? What is it? <laughs> that was working group. That's working group. Um, their first meeting is on August 1st. And then also on August 1st is the Millbrook study group. A lot of groups. A lot of groups. A lot of meetings. A lot of circles. A lot of circles. And a lot of overlap. Who's going to the zoning codification meeting? That's it. Okay. So you are. I thought I said I was going to back you up next year. Okay. I'll let you know. And then the Mass Ave Streetscape project, the, the phase two, there will be a meeting in September. That date will be forthcoming. I've held on to September 16th, but we'll get you a, a final date for that if you're curious about the final plan. Um, and then just a couple of other things. Uh, I don't know how involved you had been potentially over the last couple of years with gateway signage. Was there any oh, discussion yeah. about gateway signs? Oh, it's been a long time. Signs and landscaping well, I bet it's before three you gateways in town. Yeah. So we'll be putting out a bid um, to get that going. It will happen actually in the spring of next year, but I'm going to bid it now. Okay. So on Mass, Mass Ave on either side? Or yeah, it's like at all of the or all. entryways. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have all, entering all, Arlington, Texas, Texas. Yeah, welcome to Arlington, and then all of the landscape around it. So for the design have, or for the actual? So we already had the, the design had been funded and paid for. It was developed by a landscape architect named Jenna Johnson. So I have all of the design plans and the specifications. It just needs to be effective. Um, and so, and we even have the all the cost estimates, and we have the funding in the capital plan for the last three years. Excellent. So now, now it's time to put it out to bid. So, wanted to keep you 
aware of that. And then just a few other things that are going on with the buildings, the, the ARB managed buildings. Um, with Central School, in addition to the conversation we just had, going to be working on a bid for the parking lot and for the two entryways, so both Maple Street and Academy. And that's from a combination of capital plan funds as well as uh, urban renewal funds. Um, and then you may have noticed that Jefferson Cutter House has been, is really in Looks completion great. mode. Looks absolutely great. It's really beautiful. Yeah. And so there's going to be a, a summer soiree oh, by, nice. hosted by the Dallin Museum on August 7th, Sunday at night. We'd love for you to be able to join in the celebration of the completion of the renovation. What date was that? August 7th. And what time? What's that? What time? Uh, I'll send you the details. Those are my updates. I, I guess actually there's one last one I put down here, which is Town Day. I've reserved a booth. <laughs> and everybody's really excited about it. And so yes. <laughs> I thought I might yes. <laughs> invite <tell>. you. <laughs> yes. Laura's going to be. Does someone want my polo shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I got a polo you still have it? Oh, okay. I, have my... I thought I might invite. Like, they're so beautiful. They are nice. <laughs> Perhaps participate in a booth. Participated the last time it was a group. I had been on board for about six weeks. <laughs> did you get a did you get a shirt? Did I didn't get a shirt. It wasn't the shirt here? Can I offer you a booth? <laughs> you missed the shirt? I missed the shirt. Oh, I have no shirts. You know, but I can I can figure that out. I think a couple <laughs> of I think a couple of us could fit <laughs> in my shirt. So. <laughs> it was rather large. Sure. We'll get you could pass it on between shifts. Exactly. <laughs> uh, when is this what, uh, it is uh, September sixteenth and seventeenth. Yeah, Friday, and then Saturday is sort of town name. That's on Mass Avenue, the closest street down. Yeah. Yes, and I don't remember the booth that they expected, but I just wanted to let you know that I've reserved a booth for the department as well as the many committees and boards. And so if you would like to participate, I don't have a schedule yet, but when I do, if you're interested, please let me know. GIS is always a big hit there. <laughs> have GIS go there. It seems like a forever. It's a, exactly. <laughs> Just need one set of visual. So that's my update. Thank you. Jan. You're welcome. Yeah. Minutes from June 20th. I didn't see. I didn't have any suggestions yet. Good. I did not either. Yeah. That's fine. Yep. Same thing. That's good. Yep. I'll move to approve the minutes of. Is it June 20th? Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Great. Anything else? No, anything else from anybody else? Just, uh, when's the next scheduled meeting? Okay, so that's important. The next scheduled meeting is August 15th, and we have two, we will have two EDRs, uh, special permit hearings, um, coming before us. We should be getting all of the paperwork. I'm making a jump. I think we have one right now, but we should be getting the second one. And that'll be so that it will be an important meeting. And August 15th at 7.30. No, I'm, I'm just saying what for oh. I'm, I'm, I'm half feeling we're getting really busy fairly soon. Okay. I'm just trying to... So the next meetings are all posted the same as they had been normally. We're on sort of like a summer, a bit okay. of a summer schedule okay. right now, but everything else is posted as yeah. as is. So you see, you've already posted all the meetings, correct? For the, the whole calendar year, all of the meetings have been posted. The will only thing that's changed is the time. Will they be pretty complicated in yours? Uh, the only reason I ask is because I'll be out that week, and so I won't be getting back into it at some point. So, um, so if I, you know, I, was, uh, I don't think they're very complicated. Okay, no. so from a from a review, a from a review no. perspective, I will give you a heads up. One of them is from the Massachusetts uh, Patient Foundation for the medical marijuana facility of Street. Uh, That's number one, and number two is from a business that is trying to open up in the kiosk at the what's the name? The official Freedom Square. Freedom Square. Development. Oh, yes, really? Right. Finally. Right. Oh, yes. good. Oh, wow. But it requires you to amend the permit to uh, address the change of use of the kiosk, per the original special That won't permit. be the medical marijuana case, though. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> 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 so that's the heads up of what the Should we consider are. holding the meeting in a different room that night? Oh, that's a good point. Um, I think we'll probably Did that generate right. a lot of... Selection. Cool. One particular doctor had an objection. That's true, actually. You're right. Um, we can investigate a different. 
So what's our role in that? Is it a, just a regular old EDR? Special permit, yeah. yeah. It's allowed by zoning, you see. It's yes. allowed by special yeah. permit. Yes, okay. Yeah. Right. Just to also make one point, which is that we need four votes for an EDR, so if anybody feels like they can't make it, please let us know as much in advance as possible. Yeah, because they're actually be, we need to post an advertise starting basically this Friday. Right. So, but we can't, we won't, we can't even hold the meeting if there's no four. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.